Everyday feminism is a place where straight men can go to experience the true joy of feminism, which is making fun of feminism. It's also a place where women can go if they're unhappy, angry, confused, and perpetually dissatisfied, and they want to be with other women like themselves. Today on Everyday Feminism, we find a post entitled <clears throat> Nine Fantastic Ways to Be a Practicing Feminist with Your Partner. And you know just how fantastic it's going to be because it's illustrated with a picture of a happy gay Eurasian man washing dishes. I'm not sure what that's about, but I know if a happy gay Eurasian man would come over to my house and wash dishes, that would be fantastic. And when he's done, maybe he could take out the trash. The post is written by Tori Trushite. No, really, that's her name, I swear. And Tori Trushite explains that she's a lesbian who enjoys dating masculine women. So she knows a lot about being with men because her friends tell her about it, and it sounds very difficult. I'm not making any of this up. So Tori Trushite asks, what does feminist, feminism look like in a relationship with a man? Which, of course, is a difficult question to answer, since it would involve finding a man who is in a relationship with a feminist and is able to stop sobbing long enough to explain what it's like. But as a lesbian who dates masculine women, Tori Trushite offers the following nine guidelines to straight men for how to be in a relationship with a feminist. Number one continually ask for consent. Tori Trushite writes, and this is a direct quote, so help me, I've lived in a tragic bind for the last decade, which is that I'm a lesbian who loves breasts, but I'm attracted to masculine women who don't enjoy their breasts being touched. Unquote. <laughs> So if you're a man in that situa situation, make sure to continually ask for consent before sneaking out the back door and never going home again. Number two, actually listen. Actually, I don't know what this section said because I wasn't paying attention. Number three, respect your partner's autonomy over their body. Happily, if your partner can be described by the possessive adjective there, it's possible she has more than one body, and you can respect her autonomy over one of them while going to town with the others until the first one is ready to go. Number four, <laughs> four, split, split housework, but in a way that works for everyone. This sentence has no rational meaning. Well, there are five more fantastic ways to be a feminist with your partner in the article nine fantastic ways to be a feminist with your partner. But if you followed the fantastic advice in the article so far, you probably no longer have a partner and are now miserable, lonely, bitter, and angry. So you've come to the right website. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven.